I would like to, to start off by thanking um, President Trachtenberg, Jack Cavance, um, Robert Chernak, and Mary Jo Warner for um, their support of the GW women's basketball program during my four years here at GW. Um, it was something I'm so proud of, and I, I know how much you put into making this program something to be proud of, and I appreciate all of your efforts. I would like to also start off by recognizing the people who have, have come here tonight um, at my request to join me in, in celebrating this. I want to start with my Uncle Ed and Aunt Jen, and then my Aunt Babe and Uncle Mike, um, Shelby and Mike Redman, um, who were in the crowd for my favorite game ever, the NCAA tournament game over, and the win over Drake, and who, despite not knowing me very well, were so excited for me that they just had to be here tonight. Um, thank you for coming. My cousins, Ryan and Megan, who are really like my brothers and sisters, um, who are actually unofficially employed as permanent ball kids during my four years here. I don't know that anybody else got a turn. I think, uh, and then they kind of took over the men's program as well. So, um, um, I share so many special memories with them and I can't imagine going through this night without having them here with me. Um, at, oh, and as a side note, both are currently on the ballot for ball kid induction into the Hall of Fame, so <laughs> get your letters in. Um, my Aunt Joey, their mom, who is um, passed away from ovarian cancer in September, and I know is, is here in spirit tonight. And many of you would know my Aunt Joey if you saw her. Um, she didn't miss a home game the entire time I was here and actually drove down to Virginia Tech because I couldn't manage to pull off scoring my thousand points on the home floor. And she wanted to make sure she was there, so she drove on down to make sure she watched me score that thousandth point. Um, Jimmy, uh, one of our team managers, who always took extra special care of me. Coach McEwen used to give him a hard time and tell Jimmy, Jimmy, the camera always follows Mariah when you're videoing. <laughs> and he used to wear him out about that. And, you know, I don't know what the big deal was. He cannot, you know, he can't fix it. I was the most exciting person on the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy, for being a fan. Um, Ed McKee and Brad Bauer, who invested so much time in the promotion of women's basketball, you know, I have, I was going back through my things, I was going back through my media guides and my, and we had posters and I have like a life-size poster and my kids were saying, mom, why are you on all these books and these posters? And so I said, well, because I was a movie star, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for promoting me like a movie star. Um, Stan Morrell who is my boss from an internship my sophomore and junior year, who once came to a game and brought a banner that stretched the entire width of the GW gym and said, this is Mariah's house, which was awesome. He threatened to do it to me tonight, but <laughs> <laughs> bought me this beautiful bracelet instead. And then Glenn Hogel, a GW fan who uh, has been a GW fan for years and I had never met him until my senior year when I was leaving the gym after a game and he walked up and, and introduced himself and said, um, I just wanted you to know I've, I've really enjoyed watching you play and probably wrote me one of the nicest letters that I've ever received in my life and, and compared me to a, a John Wayne character. Which was <laughs> Check that off my list, I've been compared to John Wayne. Um, and gave me a scrapbook of clippings that he had collected for me that I actually have here with me tonight and, and shared with my family and my kids. Thank you, Mr. Ogle. Um, Chris Henley, who taped me back together. My junior, you know, I held it together my freshman and sophomore year, and then I started to fall apart. Not huge pieces, but pieces started to fall apart. And Chris would promptly tape those back on and, and retape those back on until I could go back out there, which was Thank you, Chris, for taking such good care of me. Um, Mike Bozeman, who is, is here tonight, the, the new coach for GW and, and came to support me with, with Coach McEwen not being able to, and I, I really appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Uh, Blanche and David Anderson, um, who are lifetime GW fans, way before my time, and 
were happy to yell for me and at me when it was necessary from their spot um, over on the sidelines. Thank you for coming out. Um, my husband, Chris, who is genuinely proud of me. Um, I, don't, I couldn't say a sentence that would sum it up more than that. He is just genuinely proud of everything I've accomplished, and I appreciate that. And we actually met playing basketball in a um, co-ed basketball league um, in law school. And um, so basketball led me to my husband as well. And then my kids, Sophie and Blue, who have told everybody in Knoxville that their mama is in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> so thank you for bragging on me, kiddos. In fact, Sophie is taking my plaque in for show and tell on Monday. <laughs> thank you, everyone. I thought about preseason conditioning down around the reflecting pool, and 7 a.m. came a little early on some days, but I guess if you have to run at 7 a.m., there's really not a better place to do it than the monuments in the spring or the fall. Um, traveling to Puerto Rico, California, um, Texas, Iowa, and all of the states in the Atlantic 10, places that I had not been um, before I came to, G to GW. Um, the Smith Center atmosphere and during the 17th point comeback in the last five minutes to defeat Drake and go to the Sweet 16 is something I can hear in my head even today. It was awesome. The countless memories of my teammates and both on and off the court, some I could share with you, some I couldn't, um, and many of whom are, are still lifelong friends today and who Ed McKee helps me keep up with. Um, and I thought about the, I distinctly remember the first day I moved in. I come from a town of about 30,000 people in middle Tennessee and my roommate who I had never met arrived to find me sitting in the middle of the floor and I had dumped all my stuff in the middle of the floor and I was crying and she's, I'm speaking Southern and she's not quite sure what I'm saying because she's from New Jersey. <laughs> and finally she says, well, honey, what's wrong with you? And I said, I, I don't know, I'm cut out to be here. I just don't know, I, I just don't know. And I can't even find McDonald's and I'm starving. <laughs> and she stuck her arm out, picked me up. And you know, now I can, I drag my kids all over the country during the summer and I can find McDonald's in just about any town I go. <laughs> so, um, I remember butting heads with Coach McEwen, um, a man for whom I now have a tremendous love and respect um, I came from a very different coaching philosophy. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And you did what you were told or you hit the track. Um, and Coach McEwen was, was a lot different than that. His respect was, was, it was more subtle. You know, the way he demanded his respect was much more subtle. Um, and I struggled to fit into that. I, I think I struggled to fit into D.C. my first three years, and I think I struggled to fit in with him my first three years. And then, you know, after a few of those incidents that we – he has to tell on me because I have it coming. Um, he finally put me in my place my junior year, and I certainly had that coming. Um, and things really turned around from there. And my senior year is, is something I will treasure always because finally he and I were finally on the same page. Mostly that was my fault that we weren't on the same page up until that point. Um, and I'm forever grateful that he was able to see potential behind a youthful attitude. Um, I'm a better mother, I'm a better wife, I'm a better teacher for um, the lessons that I learned from him. And I stand before you truly proud of my accomplishments as an athlete and humbled beyond all explanation to be standing here as a, a Hall of Fame inductee. Um, but with those things, I am most proud of my personal growth here at, that, that GW fostered in me. Um, during my four years, I transformed from a small town girl to a young woman confident on her own in a city and ambitious to see the rest of the world. I arrived a headstrong, authority challenging young lady who only saw the world in black and white and left an open-minded young woman with an understanding of the broad range of gray. GW defines me in so many ways and I will forever carry this place in my heart. Thank you for letting me share my memories of GW with you and for being here tonight to share this incredible honor with me.